Hi guys and welcome to another Divi 4 tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well today I'm going to add a custom WooCommerce button to my little thing. I've been building this section here and I was just going to add a WooCommerce button. So I thought I'd share with you how to do it. You can add a WooCommerce button as long as you've got products anywhere on your site. Not only with the Divi theme, what we're going to demonstrate here today will work with any WordPress theme. We happen to be using Divi theme, which is awesome. If you want to take it for a test drive, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. But if we go to the WooCommerce website, you can find short codes for just about anything. And I'll put the WooCommerce this link to this page below the video today. And we're going to use this particular piece of code. So what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll get rid of my button here that I've created. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Once enabled, want to go down to where we want to work. You may have a different system if you're using a different theme. Here's my module for Divi right here. And some, some of you might be asking, um, well Divi's got an inbuilt add to cart button. Yes, they have. But I had a bit of a problem with it styling wise. So I thought I'd do it the old fashioned way, which I've done before for people. And I thought I'd share that with you because it's pretty useful to know. OK, so I'm going to add a new module. And I'm going to make it a code module. Inside that code module, I'm going to copy and paste the code that we got from the WooCommerce page. Now I'm going to leave that open for a minute because if we look at this code it says add to cart ID 99. Well that's the particular product ID that we want this button to link to. So we need to find that out. So let's go to our dashboard. While I'm here I'll get rid of the CSS code that I wrote earlier. Because we'll be rewriting this. Save those changes. Now then let's go to the products and get the product ID of the product that we want. And that was a striped shirt. You could put it in the search if you've got a lot of products. I think I should be able to spot it. There we go, right there. Okay, striped shirt. If you look, when you're hovering over the name here, below it, it'll have the ID and the ID number. Now the one we want is 80. Let's go back to our code. And put the number 80 in there, being sure not to lop off either of the inverted commas up there because you're going to need those. Okay, there we have it. Let's save our changes. As you can see, it's popped it in down below. Don't know why it's giving it a default sort of border there, but there's the button in its sort of raw form. Now, what we want to do is style it. So, I'm going to exit the visual builder and we'll do this the old fashioned way with some custom CSS. Hit the purple button, save my changes, and exit the Visual Builder. I'm using Google Chrome here with a fantastic Chrome inspector. Most of the browsers have this nowadays, but uh, I'm using Chrome today because it's really useful. All right, so now I want to style the button. I want to get rid of that price because I've already put my price in over here. So I just want to style the button and get rid of the border really. So I'm going to right click on the button and hit inspect. And there it is, there's our href, which is the button link of course. Okay, so let's write some styles for it. Right, the background color, I'm going to want it to be the same as that price there or this writing up here. So let's just inspect one of these and get that color. I just right clicked and grabbed the element with that color and there's the color. Where did it go? There it is. I'm going to copy that color code. I'm going to copy the important too because we'll need it to overwrite the default styles there. Control C to copy. Let's go back up to our button or back down to our button. There we go. And let's put that first style in there. I want it as a background color, so I'm going to say background and paste in 
that hex code we just copied. And as you can see, it's changed it to the color I want right there. Now I'm going to want exactly the same thing for the border, which is blue at the moment. So I'm going to say border color. I'm going to paste in that hex code. And that's changed that border, that color. Semicolon. And the only other thing is I want to change the actual text in there to a sort of pink color to match this. So I'm, I think there's one called deep pink that might work. So I'm just going to say color deep pink there is it is right there let's have a look yeah that'll work fine for me semicolon all right now i want to copy this code because when you do it in your browser like this when you refresh your browser it'll overwrite this it'll all go back to how it was initially to make it permanent i need to copy it and put it in our custom css file in the theme so i'm going to hit control c to copy now to do this, we want to target this particular thing because we don't want every button necessarily to be this color. So to do this, I'm going to give this actual module a class. That way we can target just this button. Okay. So let's get rid of the inspector and go into our module. Let's enable the visual builder and give it a class. Like I say, you can do this with any theme. Uh, to put the class and stuff in there, you may have to go down to the code level and just do it that way, but it's very easy to do. I might do a video on this on uh, the 2020 theme. Right, let's go into our module. And in advanced, CSS IDs and classes. I'm gonna give it a class. You can give it an ID if you want, but I'm gonna use a class and I'm going to call it uh, Y but for yellow button. Right, let's save that, save our changes. Exit the visual builder. Okay, let's go to our dashboard now. Let's go down to Divi, theme options, general tab, right at the bottom is a custom CSS box. I've already got a title in there for when I did it earlier. Okay, we gave that module a class of Y but, so dot Y for yellow, B U T for button, and open and close some curly brackets. And I'll put this CSS down below, so don't worry about copying it while I'm doing it. It'll be down below this YouTube video. Okay. What did we want to do with it? Well, we copied that code from the browser. There it is right there. So let's save our changes. If we actually look at that, it's not the actual module we want. It's a link within the module, the button. So let's right click and inspect that. As you can see, it's gone back to default. Now I refreshed it. It's the A tag within the class that we created. There's our class right there. Y but. So it's going to be Y but A. Let's go back to our theme options. Y but A. Okay. Let's save those changes. Back to the site. When I refresh, hopefully that will go to the colors that we gave it in the browser just now. There we go. Ah, oh, hot pink's not turned up on that. Okay, let's try the important class. We're having to overwrite the default link color of this theme. We could do it in the theme customizer as well as the CSS, but I just want it to be for this particular button, not everything on there. So let's save that now. Now we've given it the important class, it should work. Yep, that did it, that's fine. Okay, what else do we want? We want uh, don't want the price in there because we've got it over here. Let's deal with that next. And we also want to get rid of that border.
Okay, the price, move that up. When I hover over span there, you can see it's highlighting the price. That's the price. We should be able to just tell that not to display to get rid of it. So I say display. Of course, you might want this in there and you can add spacing and font size to it if you do want it. Colon. Yep, you see it's gone right there. Fantastic. Well, let's just do that. We'll take the display none and it's span and again it's within our Y butt class so we'll do that again dot Y butt span this time open and close some curlies hit return and put it in the middle there display none now hopefully we won't have to put important by that we'll see there's our check mark to refresh and see if it stays like that. Fantastic. Great. So let's get rid of this border now. And then we're done. And I want to middle align, center align that to there it is right there. So it's um, add to cart in line. But again, I don't want to affect all WooCommerce buttons. So I'll put this under our uh, Y butt class again. So I'm going to double left click. And I'll let me edit it. I just want to take this last class at the end there. See if I take that away. Yeah, it's gone. I think I might have to say bored and unimportant to overwrite this. Let's do it. So that was Y butt. And it's another class, so let's give it another dot. There's the class. Let's make a bit of space and border none. See if that works. We may have to force it. Save the changes. Refresh. still there yeah as you can see junk so that's taking precedence we'll give it the important exclamation now that should do it Fantastic, just what you want. The only other thing I want to do is I want to center align my button here. So I can do that, I'll enable the visual builder. I can do that within the module. Let's go down to where we want to work. There's our module. Hit the cog. Let's go to design. Let's just move this out of the way so we can see. And I think if I just go to text alignment middle, that'll do it. Fantastic. So there's how to create a custom WooCommerce button. And you can put that, like I say, anywhere. And it's really handy if you just want to add an image or a little video and have an add to cart button. It's just one less step for the person to take. Let's just make sure the link works. automatically added it to the cart let's view the cart make sure we got that striped shirt in there there it is so there you have it there's how to add a custom WooCommerce add to cart button to your site I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day.